Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are when you're watching this. Today is a question and answer session about Nigerian food and recipes with a good friend, Kechi. She came to the United States in 2008 and was born and raised in Nigeria. So there's no one else better to talk about Nigerian food and recipes than Kechi. And I'm um, just waiting for her to join us here. So be ready to ask your own questions, post them in the comments, tag Kechi, and she would be happy to answer them. I also encourage you to follow her YouTube channel, Cook Healthy with Kechi, where you can find all kinds of recipes, especially Nigerian recipes um, which she knows best and uh, it is gonna be a great conversation today and she has a lot of information to share about cooking uh, particularly in the afro fusion realm uh, it is it's gonna be a We're just waiting for her to hop on here and talk all about Nigerian food and recipes um, if you've never tried it yourself I encourage you to look up some of the recipes and be sure to ask her questions if, if you want clarity, if you want more information, she would be happy uh, to, to answer any kind of questions. So uh, just waiting for her to join here and we will be starting this Q&A very shortly. Again, for everyone joining, welcome to this live Q&A about Nigerian food and recipes with Kechi. She is gonna be joining us here shortly and so happy everyone is here to join us. I am inviting you up on stage, Kechi. So, um, and there you are. Hello, welcome, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. <laughs> I see you're in your kitchen, that's awesome. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. How are you doing? Happy Saturday. Yes, Saturday. It's the weekend and we are here to talk Nigerian food and recipes. So it's a great day, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for joining me today, Ketchi. I appreciate your time and uh, this conversation. I'm really looking forward to learning more. And for everyone who is watching and listening, it is a great opportunity to learn about, you know, the Nigerian culture, food, recipes, everything. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I, I gave a quick intro. You came to the United States in 2008 from Nigeria. And, and what was that transition like for you coming from Nigeria? What is the culture there and then coming to the United States? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think one of the most important things that really caught my eyes was uh, just how flashy and beautiful America is, <laughs> a different culture, you know? So yeah, so that was one of the things that caught my eyes. And, I'm actually trying to, you know, all the the comments and stuff. And I feel like, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, this, but you can see me good, right? Yes, you look uh, great. Okay, yeah. So one of the things that caught my eyes was, of course, how fancy America looks and all of that. But prior to coming to America, I've been going to the UK. So I kind of know that, you know, is going to be that same kind of, you know, city, beautiful buildings and stuff like that. And I was also very surprised to see a lot of massive land in trees and stuff. I'm like, okay, you know, because <laughs> I think that America is just like London, like a lot of you know trains and stuff like that. But then I got to see that there is the suburbs and all of that. Another thing too was the food, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's so different. You know, in Nigeria, you literally make everything from the scratch, like. And almost everyone, every family, like you have to have a farm. Like you have to have some place that you plant, you know, maybe not in large scale, but like your vegetables and stuff. Yeah. But even if you can see by from the store, right? 
Yeah, those we are some of the things that obviously is different. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, is different, you know, culture, different mm -hmm. kind of developmental stages and stuff like that. And yeah, you are right. In 2000, and, let me just say 2009. It was December 2008, but yeah. And, uh, and initially, I didn't want to do food. My, my, Cousin used to tell me, hey, you can cook and whatever, like you can start a food blog. And I'm right now. And but when I started having my kids, I felt like, you know what? I think I want to share with them the kind of food that I ate growing up. Uh -huh. You know, so that was one of the things that made me start my blog. It, it was just like where I go right now. The recipes that I make at home or whatever but of course the vision has changed since then you know but yeah that was my initial thought you know to, just to keep these memories alive for my kids mm -hmm. definitely and you talked about that that transition and, and changes of food so Keshi tell us what are the main features and, and highlights what makes Nigerian food unique what makes our food? <laughs> oh Lord! Um, I guess what makes our food unique is most of the time we make them from scratch. You know, so that uh, uh, for instance, I see a lot of people now, especially a lot of people that are gluten free, going to the cassava and stuff. But you know, we had we we had cassava farm. Like we, we like you see how all those things grow and are cultivated, and then. For instance, in Nigeria, this month in most of the cities, most of the of the villages is like a new festival. So it's like a celebration of harvest. It's a celebration of harvest. I know Americans have the Thanksgiving, you know, but they are totally different. You understand what I'm saying? So what makes our food different is that we, most of the times, we make them from scratch. You know, like I used to joke that I never seen a canned coconut milk until I came to America. And that's, you know, because we want to make, you want to cook coconut rice, just pluck some coconut, just make coconut milk. You know, most of the time, that's what we do. You know, you have some, that's the mindset. Even here, I still make my coconut milk most of the time. I still, I, I do buy from store sometimes. But, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, so most of the time, um, our, the, the most important difference is that, you know, we make our food from the squad. If it's cooking soup, I never see a can of soup in the store. There could be now, right? Um, make our okra soup from scratch, egusi soup from scratch. And the kind of things that grow in Nigeria is also different from the kind of mm -hmm. things we have here. Um, for instance, um, I don't think apple, I, I don't think apple tree can grow in Nigeria because of apple. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very hot, you know. I don't think berries can grow there either. You know, if you see berries and apple, it's like important. But people send them from abroad and something like that. But something like cassava, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, also, something like flour. You know, we don't do a lot of flour. Like, I, I see here in the States, when they're cooking soup, they add a little bit of swallow, uh, flour to thicken it. Um, no, we use seeds and nuts mm -hmm, as soup oh. You know, so the seeds and nuts are soup thickness. So, so a lot of a lot of things, you know, um, yeah, th those are the things that you can easily see. And also the way we eat. In, in, yeah, I was telling one of my friends that in Nigeria, if, if you, you have to eat dinner, you eat dinner, that's it. You don't eat dinner, then eat the snack. You know, it's like double portion dinner. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's fascinating. I know um, cassava you mentioned is is a one of the staple. It's like a starch, right? It's mm -hmm. it's a root vegetable, and and here in the United States, it's in the grocery stores, but not a lot of people probably use it or know how to use it. So, what would you say are the typical uses for cassava in Nigerian cooking? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think a lot of people are beginning to use it here. I see it in, in my local grocery store. It, they call it. Uh, you know, mm. that's cassava. Cassava is yuca. Many things. And <laughs> most of the time, what we use it for is to swallow. 
Um, I don't know. Have you seen? I don't think you have you seen any Nigerian dishes. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, so whenever you think about, especially West African food, Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Kotonou, around that area, we think about squalo. For instance, a bowl of soup and a starchy ball that you roll and then you dip it into the soup and you eat it. Okay. So, yeah, so cassava, that we use it a lot for that. We use it for squalo. So, most you can, you can actually literally type into the internet, cassava swallow, and you will see what I'm trying to say. Um, okay. There are different ways. They, they, they have a swallow they make from cassava that is called gari, G-A-R-R-I. -R -R -I. Okay. You that swallow. Um, there's also another one we call apple. You know, that's the local name. Um, I, I'm sorry, you, you can just, you can, we can call it cassava fufu. <laughs> <laughs> We can call it cassava fufu. I'm sure if you type in cassava fufu, F-U-F-U, -F cassava F-U-F-U, -F on Google, you're going to see what I mean. And then you can type in cassava and okra, or cassava, and, you know, so we use cassava as a start ball, and we serve it alongside a kind of, it can be seafood okra. It can be vegetable okra. It can be okra with mushrooms. It can be mm -hmm. um, any other kind of soup. It can also be a goosey soup, which is our melon seed soup. So in Nigeria, our traditional food, um, I would say one of our traditional food, because our main traditional food is like rice, right? like jollof rice. <laughs> so <laughs> our traditional food is that um, cassava, fufu, and soup. You know? Also, you can use, you can do oat fufu. So these days, we can use oatmeal, you know, uh -huh. we can, yeah, we can use ground oats, you know, and make fufu and make it as a ball and dip it into the soup. You know, we also use another, um, another um, root vegetable. Would I call it vegetable or starch? Um, it's mm -hmm. yam, y -A -M. Not, the, not the potato yam that you see here. Like you can you can you can uh, Google like West African yam, you okay. know. So we also pound that as well, and the cassava we pound it as well. It goes through a lot of process. The, the cassava fufu goes through a lot of process, including fermentation. So you know, uh -huh. it goes through, yes before you now make it into fufu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. So yam, but yam is pretty much easy. You boil it, you pound it, you make it into balls, and dip it in your soup. And so yeah, pretty much soup and fufu is one of our main, major, you know, <laughs> major places, <laughs> right? And also, also, um, right, you know, jollof rice, you know, I'm sure you might have seen that, have you? Jollof rice, had, had about jollof rice or seen jollof rice? Have mm -hmm. you heard about that one? Yeah, have yeah. You have? You have? Okay, so jollof rice is basically cooking up some rice in stew, and you know, stew made up of the fresh tomatoes and the onions, the garlic, the ginger. If you want to add peppers, and and some people make jollof rice with chicken. Jollof rice, and you're gonna add some kind of broth. Some people use chicken broth or vegetable broth. If you want to keep it on, on my blog, it's vegan. I also have other ones, you know, so it depends on how you want to make it. Baby, can I help you? Make it uh, Yes. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um, we, we, we pretty much have a lot of delicacies that we love to share with the world, but definitely fufu and jollof rice is like, uh, it's like, it's, it's like we export those out of Africa. I mean, Anybody that knows about West African food will definitely be able to say, okay, jello fries. Or maybe uh -huh. food. Yeah. <laughs> they're staples, you would say. <laughs> Sorry, say that one more time. They say they're staples. So it's like, you know, yeah. yes, yes. that are like really, really regular or common. Uh, what, about, what about desserts in West Africa and specifically Nigeria? I know, that is a good question. Like I mentioned before, we, we don't really eat a lot of desserts like cake and stuff, but I would say that there is this snack that we eat a lot of, and um, 
and, and it's called chin chin. They make it with, with flour, egg, you know, and we can, we can literally call it flour chips. <laughs> okay. So, um, also plantain chips. We, like, I mm. kept growing up, I don't ever remember, uh, maybe after dinner or something, having a dessert. No. You know, we really, <laughs> <laughs> you eat your food and you eat your food, okay? And, uh -huh. yeah. So, um, dessert, African dessert, these days, you know, times are changing and we are literally doing a lot of things. So if you go to a restaurant in Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria, or Lagos, Nigeria, or even in Ghana, anywhere, you should be able to order any dessert you want. But traditionally, you know, it's not really our thing. You understand? Yeah, it's not really our thing. But uh, you, you, we, you see a lot of that when there is like traditional wedding, there is some kind of you know, festivity going on. Um, apart from that, you know, we eat and we call it good, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it all tastes amazing too. <laughs> so what about those traditional holidays or celebrations? What foods are, are, are different from your normal kind of eating throughout a Nigerian day? that you get to eat on holidays uh, or, or those special celebrations like weddings or uh, annual events? Yeah, I, I would say, most, let's say during Christmas, because Nigeria, like in Nigeria, we have 50% Christians and we have 50% Muslims. So okay. throughout the year, you will see a lot of celebration, you know, mm -hmm. either, either, that you will see a lot of Muslim celebrations, you will see a lot of Christian celebrations, you know? So, um, I'm a Christian, so most of the time during Christmas, we'll make, instead of making jello fries, jello, jello fries, you can really make it anytime, any day, but you can make like fried rice, and it's not the Asian type of fried rice. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can search for, <laughs> you can search for Nigerian fried rice. I have one on my blog. I actually have one here on my page. It's awesome. different is spectacular so that is like the kind of food you make when you have time okay or when uh -huh. you're preparing for some celebrations also something like nigerian meat pie hmm. i have one on my blog i have one on my page here too also on the blog nigerian meat pie is just, i don't know how to describe it but it's just like this pastry filled with meat and it's not the way I know that some of my friends that live in the UK, they say it looks like Cornish pie and stuff like that, but it's okay. different and we season it different and it's so good. So those kind of food, we don't eat it at the time. Another food that we eat every time and we can eat during the holidays as well is like plantains. Oh my mm. God. Like, oh child, like we don't okay? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're not playing when it comes. We love plantains, okay? So, so we can we can make any house. So these days, um, again, I, like I say, like all the nations of the world is like they're coming together and the cultures are like transparent or whatever. So these mm -hmm. days, in a general restaurant, you pretty much can order plant, uh, plantain and they fill it up with like sausage or fill it up whatever. But mm -hmm. I'm you, like plantains, even though we eat it like we can eat it every day, we can roast it. I have one of those recipes here, roasted plantains and avocado. You can just eat it that way. If you want to keep it vegan, you can also mm, take it to the knob, top knob, right? You can make a lot of things with that. So, yeah, definitely rice. Right. Making it a different way. Making like coconut rice is a party rice. We also have like party jello rice. So, even though it might seem like a different food, when it comes to parties and stuff, we make it different. You know, we make it for mm -hmm. party, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we can. And, and even the soups, like a goosey soup is like, literally, it's so good. You know, um, mm -hmm. soup. You know, it's so good. The way you make it, the ingredients, that's also like a party food. So some of this food that we find ourselves um, daily, weekly, um, during, dur during parties and whatever, we still transform them and still serve them at parties. For instance, 
Um, here where I live, if I decide to go to one Nigerian party, trust and believe you're going to see Nigerian meat pie there. You're going to see Nigerian fried rice there. You're going to see Nigerian um, party jollof rice. And also the plantain. Also, one of the things they do with the plantain is they do giz dodo. For instance, gizzard and plantain. Our traditional name for plantain, we can call it dodo, D-O-D-O. -D -O, you know, so okay. when they serve you that giz dodo, it's like an ultimate party food. There's a way they put this dessert and sear it and cook it very soft. And then just cook it in a lot of pepper. It's like pepper, gizzard. And then they mix it up with fried plantain. It's so good. So those are the food that you can pretty much eat every day, but you can also, it goes beyond every day because mm -hmm. you still find it in parties. Another thing that we eat a lot, well, not a lot, but you see at parties is like um, peppered meat. It can be peppered fish, peppered this, peppered that. It just, we love spicy stuff, okay? So, <laughs> so those are... Did I answer your question? <laughs> did I answer your question? <laughs> it sounds delicious and amazing. I love plantains myself. Uh, they're, they're so diverse, like you said. I I'm wondering, Ketchy, what makes the, the meat spicy? What are those flavorings that are typical in the culture? Right. Oh, my. we use all kind of peppers. Um, we uh, well, the closest to one of the peppers that we use that makes it spicy is habanero. You know, Ooh. we have. If you go to West Africa, before, you can ask them for the yellow pepper. You know, like there is this West African pepper. We also have the one African bird's eye bird bird's eye pepper. Very spicy. You know. Um, like very tiny, mini red peppers, and uh, you know, most of the time you can find them around. But of course, in Nigeria, you find them, you know, um, the way they are, and then you grind them when you're making. So, we use a, a lot of pepper. We also use like alligator. Pepper. Have you seen that before? Mm -mm. Uh, okay, so you can Google that alligator. <laughs> so, we use a combination of spices, you know, okay. that oh my god. Take your food to the next level. Uh -huh. uh, for instance, when you're making Nigerian pepper soup, like we actually literally have a soup called pepper soup. Like <laughs> you gotta be literally ready to, <laughs> ready to get your ice bottle of water or whatever you want to use to cool that because it's gonna be so pepperish and hot. <laughs> so we have uh, pepper soup, a lot of like and uh, pepper soup. Yes, what we cook is like a light. Soup. You know, okay. it's like a light soup that you drink, but because most of the time you can have pepper soup if you're feeling not too well. Mm. So, you know, that mindset. So, of course, my people, they have to add a lot of pepper and a lot of spices. So after drinking it, girl, you're going to get healthy. <laughs> you're going to feel better. <laughs> you're going to uh -huh. feel better from whatever that is. Yeah, so Nigerian pepper soup is another food that you can find um, at parties that you don't cook all the time. You know, okay. you can, like for instance, growing up, usually we make pepper soup every Christmas or Easter. My father would take it upon himself to make that pepper soup. Um, yeah, so Nigerian pepper soup, good meat pepper soup, it could be anything pepper soup, it could be vegetable pepper soup, but it's hot. And uh -huh will help you get over your cold and flu and whatever. So, and again, we eat it and serve it at a party. You don't, you don't eat it every day. It's not like okra I have in my freezer, let's say, right now. That you, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. I think the the description there reminds me just, you know, you're talking about coconut at the beginning and maybe that coconut balances out the spice of you know the peppers that you use and it, it's it's so fascinating um so thinking back to growing up Keshi, what was the first recipe that you cooked all on your own mm, that's a good question <laughs> maybe boiled <the> yam <laughs> uh -huh. yes like um like yam tubas like i mentioned earlier root vegetable that you plant and then like we use it for that swallow we also can boil it and yeah, uh, curry. 
I have what I have on my uh, here page is uh, sweet potato porridge, kind of mini key the yam porridge, but I'm not, that, that's not necessarily yam, the West African. Uh -huh. So I think the first food that I made growing up might have been yam, literally cutting up some yam, putting it in a pot, adding some water, boiling it until it was tender. It's just like boiling potatoes. <laughs> okay. But hey, you were young and that was, that's what started your passion for cooking, right? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what, what then kind of, what was your most, the, the dish that you're most proud of making in your, in your lifetime so far? What would you say if it, if it had to be you know, like a Nigerian dish, what's been your most impressive? Uh, most expensive, you say? Most impressive, like what you're most, most proud of. Impressive. Yeah. Hmm. Honestly, I think I'm proud of most of the dishes that I make. I'm, I'm proud of my take on those dishes that I had growing up because uh -huh. some, most of the time I try to just make it the way I want to eat it. You know, uh, it's not necessarily going to uh, be exactly maybe how it was made. Like, I love my takes on them because. Sometimes you can get all the ingredients. And sometimes even if you can get all the ingredients, you know, when you're making food, you make it your way. You make it to mm -hmm. your need, right? So I, I cannot, I am proud of most of my, it's hard to really choose one. Of course. I, I don't even know, growing up, I used to have a favorite dish. It, it was coconut rice. But at mm. this point, I don't think it is. You know, I don't think it is because I make a lot of food um, <laughs> for clients and for myself. I cook for my kids. So it's like, I love, a, if, if I'm going to make it, I'm going to eat. And that gives me joy. So I would say most of the, most, <laughs> most of the food I share with people, I love it. I love, love coconut. So I would say, I love my coconut soup, coconut milk soup. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love my coconut mango curry. I love my Nigerian. Mm. I love my Nigerian fried rice. I love, I love food. So it's like you're telling me food is used. Gosh, I love a lot of. I, <laughs> I love my traditional recipes. I love my non-traditional recipes. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to choose. It's hard for me to really choose one dish. Maybe I'll just say rice, fried rice rice, anything rice, anything coconut. <laughs> <laughs> um, that works, yeah. I'm answering the question, am I? Oh, you are, you are. It was kind of like a trick question, you know, choosing one out of all the dishes that you make, it's nearly impossible, so. <laughs> it's fun, yeah. <laughs> Can you talk to us about meal time? You know, we talked a lot about a different recipes, some of the, the recipes using cassava, the pepper soup, all of that stuff. But what is it like to sit down at a table in Nigeria? What is that experience? What is that experience? Hmm. That is another, okay, here's the thing. Um, most times in Nigeria, I know here in America, it's like you have to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Uh -huh. um, we do that in Nigeria most, most, most of the time. I think we eat when we are hungry. You understand what I'm saying? And um, and going to school, I don't ever really remember my mom sitting down or my parents sitting down to eat with us. It's like, as soon as I eat, my father goes drop me off. You know, he goes drop us off. Like, uh -huh. um, I guess after he drops us, he can now come back eat whatever he wants. So, so but like dinner, um, yeah, my mom, she, she likes making early dinner. She makes it on time. Everybody eats. And... It, Sometimes you can see two people at the table and other people sitting over there. It's not really like, hey, everybody come and sit at one place to, to mm -hmm. eat dinner. I think it depends. Families are different. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm yes. not like experience. I, I have right. one of my friends, you know, the parents, they all like to sit down at the same, you know. And, but when I was growing up, my siblings already grown. You know? what I'm saying. Some of them okay. already. I was just like, you know how a child comes after the fact. That was what happened to me. So it was just like I am parents. So 
And someone saying so it wasn't like my kids and each other. They sit down and eat at the same time. I think my brothers and sisters might have done that when they were growing up, but it wasn't really my case. Because okay. it was just, it was just me. You know, they were already my, my sister was she was already in um in Nigeria most of the time we go to boarding school. My sister was already in high school boarding school when I was when I was little. So okay. <laughs> So it's not like by the time I was in high school, she was already done with college, right? So mm -hmm. it's not a thing. So we weren't really sitting down together. To, but she does that with her kids. I do that with my kids uh, because they're the same age. You know, if let's say one of my kids is now, let's say, in college and this one is home, they're not going to be necessarily together in the other side. So I think it's different for each parents. But one thing I would say generally is that most of the time, moms make all food. I will never remember my mom ordering some food for the entire family or just be like, oh, breakfast. Get. And it was some McDonald's anyway in Nigeria. So it's not like get this or that or no. That wasn't the case. You know, um, I never moms or whoever that cooks in the house makes all the food and and when you come back from school whenever i come back from school i just eat lunch you understand what i'm saying and uh -huh. there's always food in the house and in the evening i'll say in the evening yeah and i think it's the same thing here in america because most of the time in the morning families are on the phone right and then yeah. maybe if the kids come back they eat whatever <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time, families that make food are eating together. Yeah, um, most of the time, when I come back from school, I see my mom, and I get my lunch. I eat my lunch, whatever. But in the evening, you know, we all help out in the kitchen. Sometimes my dad, too. And then we make food, and we eat. But we rarely sit down together to eat it. Uh -huh. and everybody will just be chilling. Like, for instance, there's a way our houses go. Nigeria. We have something called ECU. It's like, it's like a, it, 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 I, don't, I don't know how to, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain that to you, but you can literally be chilling in any part of the house as long as you're eating your food. You know, <laughs> it's not like um, here that a lot of kids are picky eaters and you want to make sure you, you know, they are eating their food or whatever. Yeah. You want to stay. I mean, our evening meals, which is supper or dinner, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. You may see us eating within the same time, it may not be the same place. Okay. Huh. Yeah. It may not be the same place, but within the same time. But any other any other time, I don't think we just sit down to eat together. Again, it depends on families, you know. Mm -hmm. My own family growing up, because my sisters and brothers, we are already out of the house at that time. So it was just like what I saw growing up that I'm telling. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, stories will be different, obviously. <laughs> of course, yeah. So many different different traditions passed from family to family, and it, it all depends on what the parents do. So, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. what are your how many kids do you have, Kesi? Um, currently two. Two. Mm -hmm. What are their favorite Nigerian dishes? Maybe okra soup. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okra soup and jollof rice. O okra soup and fried rice, I think. <laughs> Okay, so this must be really, really good for all ages, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what is it like now living in the United States? How do you how do you manage cooking traditional Nigerian or West African recipes? Uh, how do you find those ingredients that you need, Kachi? Yeah. Um. Sometimes I go to African store. But you know, we move around a lot because we are a military family. So this area that we are living in right now, um, honestly, this is our third year here, the third year month. And uh, I haven't seen African store yet. I'm here to see one. Okay. But um, I'm from Maryland. And when we used to live in Maryland, Virginia, there's a lot of African store. You can go to African store and pick up your spices that you want. Mm -hmm. and and most of the time, whenever I take a trip to an African store, I, I buy a lot. For instance, even though I haven't seen an African store around here, I have a, lot, a bunch of African spices in my, 
in my freezer because before we moved here i got a lot of things and i also ordered some from from this online store called wasobia wasobia is just like it means the same thing wasobia is it means come but it's in three three different languages wa zo ya wa it just it means the same thing in nigerian language so it's an online store they sell some african stuff so i also mm -hmm. use them you know i've also ordered a couple of things from them so and what i do most of the time is if i don't have that particular thing i just make do with what i have <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> i just make do with what i have but yeah making african store uh, making african food or west african food here wherever you are living any part of the world you know you may, you may not get those spices fresh as you would in in west africa back home right but you can definitely get them dried and they still you know serve the same purpose close enough sure mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. And what would you say for for anyone who's never tasted African food, specifically West African Nigerian food, what do you think if you could say, you know, one sentence to, you know, sum it up to convince men that this is the best food in the world, what would you say? <laughs> um if you typically what I say is that if you've never tasted African food and you will love to try I'll say start with rice. You know, rice is pretty much easy on the eye. Like you can, you can yeah, start with rice, especially like jar of rice, and mm -hmm. see how it goes. You know, start with rice, and then you can try the soup and all of that. And when you are trying the soup for the first time, you can try like pepper soup, the light soup. You know, so that you are not overwhelmed with a lot of uh -huh. stuff. Like we pretty much go hard on spices. <laughs> so if yeah, yes, it's gonna blow you out of the water. So yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so I think you should start with rice. You know, start with rice, or you can start with um with um yam. You know, which is like boiled yam, orange yam. Or if you trust the person making it, not from a restaurant, you know, but from somebody you know obviously or you can if you're ordering from a restaurant you can order rice either jollof rice or fried rice and start with that and see and if you want to try the soup for the first time you can try a light soup you know something like a pepper soup and also yeah and then just gently you know go in and test the other one <laughs> perfect plan <laughs> Ketchy, thank you so much for your time. This has been so, so interesting for me, but I'm sure for everyone watching and who's going to watch in the future, I want to encourage for everyone who is watching, you know, post your questions and comments, uh, tag Ketchy, and she'd be happy to answer any kind of questions, direct you where you can find things. You know, that online site that you mentioned, Ketchy, would be a great point uh, for anyone, wherever you are. And I also want to offer this option this opportunity to you catchy tell us where we can find more of your work we know i said at the beginning you have a youtube channel so tell us about that and how we can connect yes. more with what you do <laughs> yes you can definitely find me here on my page on instagram instagram.com forward slash or on my website on my blog also if you click on my profile it should take you directly to my blog, kechajero.com. Also, on my profile, you will see a link to my YouTube channel. I just started the channel um, last year, ending of last year. So, yeah, we're still trying to get to our 1,000, first 1,000 subscribers. So, <laughs> we are now, I think, around 800 or so. But, yeah, okay. it's, a, it's fairly, you, YouTube, YouTube is slow. So, uh-huh <laughs> so um yeah definitely all of those places the same name i keep it very simple on twitter twitter.com kechajero um on facebook facebook.com the same name i keep it simple so definitely um ask me any question you know about nigerian food you know or just i would love to hear from you guys I love it. Thank you so much, Ketchy. Your, your experience, your knowledge, your love for cooking has just made this experience so great, so much to learn, and I really appreciate your time.
Thank you so much for having me, Jessica. I really, really appreciate you. We met on Clubhouse and you were like, hey, let's chat some time. And thank you for really following through because I know that a few weeks ago, like things weren't, it's like there's been a, a couple of bumps in the way. I couldn't re re respond early to your messages, but I thank you so much for making it happen. And thank you for hosting me on your page. Of course. It's my pleasure, Ketchy. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.